Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Good evening and welcome. I know you really can't see me because I'm in my ninja garb tonight because we have a very special guest. But tonight is episode 26. That's right. You got the job. Now what you should do to prepare for your first year as a principal with our special guest, Todd Nessaloni, otherwise known as at Tech Ninja Todd. Hence the ninja. Hence the ninja, exactly. In case, in case you can't see us, which much of you can, I have to get out of my shirt now. It's too That's hot. Yeah, right. me too. You guys are allowed to. We were trying to be ninjas. We were trying to be ninjas to be cute, and it just got the intro gets longer and longer. It does. <laughs> we we yeah. jumped in here. I appreciate. Now we're all sweating. I appreciate my fellow ninjas. Um, so this is episode twenty six of the principal uh, podcast, and. Um, we are so excited to have our special guest, Todd Nesloni, who is one of the co-hosts of the podcast at Edu All-Stars. As you know, Principal Cast is a weekly roundtable discussion about current topics in education leadership. For more information, please visit www.principalcast.com. You can connect with us in many ways, of course, on Twitter, at Principal Cast, and our, both our audio and video feeds are on iTunes. Tonight's topic is brought to you by storyboardthat.com, the world's best online storyboard creator. You can enjoy 25% off any purchase today at storyboardthat.com slash teachercast. But before we go into that, we want to catch up on our weekly segment, and we're going to include Todd in this. Uh, but Todd, basically what we do every week is we just kind of try to catch up with each other because even as co-hosts, we don't even get a chance to talk with each other so much because we're so busy. So I'm going to ask Teresa if she can kind of give us an update on what's been going on over there in Michigan. Um, it's almost spring <laughs> in Michigan. <laughs> We've had a couple of really nice days, which is amazing. Um, I, you know what? I am I'm finishing up my first year, as most of you know. And we are in the middle of the fourth marking period. We're almost, I think the midterm is this Thursday. Um, but I haven't been at work um, since, uh, gosh, it's been like two weeks, I think. I, we were on spring break starting um, Holy Thursday. So a week ago, this last Thursday, and then my grandmother passed away. Um, so I was with my family those three days prior to that. So I really haven't been at work since like, two weeks from yesterday. So um, I'm, I really <laughs> don't have a whole lot that's going on. You don't on, have a whole lot. Totally honest. I, you know, everything and nothing all at the same time. So, you know, with that, <laughs> Jess, what's been going on with you? <laughs> hey, well, I just barely made it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I just caught in and got some scary ninja there. And I, for that, I, don't mean, yeah. I don't mean Tech Ninja Todd either. That's right. That's right. There is <laughs> another. There's really? another ninja bringing it tonight. Yeah. It's me. Yeah. Um. Let's see what's going on. We just ended last week with on um, Friday. We had Grandparents Day, which is like the biggest event of the year at our school. Wait, um, Jessica, who, who is that in honor of? What? Like that? Like that event? Like who? Who do you honor in that event? Grandparents? Oh, okay. I was, I was just wondering. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> no, we just, Grandparents Day is normally in the fall. We have it in the spring because then um, the teachers, I mean, they put in a lot for planning for this. Like, we had 400 guests in our building, which is the population of our building. So um, it was huge. And we have, um, like they go through this cycle of three things where they go and have a snack together with a little special activity, then they go in the gym and watch the kids do some performances, and then go into the classrooms and they had different things going on there. So it was a huge event that was like the whole entire afternoon, which is a pretty big deal for us, I guess, in our little building. 
That's awesome. I'm sorry, I really like stunned you on that one. I thought yeah, you would like, just know that that's where I was going with the it. grandparents. The grandparents. <laughs> there it is. I I just want to throw in really quick from the chat room. Peggy said as we were being our crazy pirates, um, sure, or not pirates, t- a ninja. ninja. <laughs> they were talking about pirates later down in the chat room. <laughs> right. uh, Todd, in case you don't know, the chat room continues to move as soon as anybody posts something new. So if I'm <laughs> so if I'm in the middle of something and then it changes, sometimes I say words that don't belong there, and that was one. Yeah, thing. I've watched the show, so so. Yeah, so I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> This is difficult for me. <laughs> so um, Peggy said this is one of the requirements for being a principal. We have to be a little bit crazy, and that's the truth. And then, uh, and she also said she loves that the school continues to run smoothly even when the principal isn't there. And I think that that's a really important thing for people who are current principals and people who are going to be um, principals is that you know your really your main goal is to get your building to run with or without you. Um, and so that's, yeah, it's, Peggy, you're right, because I could focus on my family and not have to worry about, um, not have to worry about what was going in my building. So that's a really good point. Yeah, I think sometimes my building would like to run without me. I mean, I think they really enjoy when I'm <laughs> out of the building and uh, that we have uh, people who fill in. They seem to do much better than I do, um, which just actually. Just different, not better, just different. Just different, right, right. So, um Actually, what I was going to say, tomorrow I'm actually going to be out of the building, but I'm going to be seeing, this will be the second uh, part of a three-part series on um, Allen November. That's up at our uh, New Jersey uh, Principals and Supervisors Association, and I'm really excited about that. So I actually will be out of the building tomorrow, and I'm sure they're very excited about that. (laughs) But I'm just coming off of of spring break, and I'm very excited. I got my – the first – all my edits and stuff done for the manuscript, the the book that I'm writing. So I'm very excited about that with uh, everything is going to be turned into Corwin in the next couple days. And then uh, looking forward to everything that's going on with that. And then I also did recharge my batteries, took some time off and and relax and, and enjoyed some of the spring break. Hey Spike, did I, see, did I see correctly that you guys went back to school early? Did you have to add time in because of the snow? We did, yeah. We actually okay. added in two days. Uh, so, but I mean, just having off that Friday and then the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday yeah. was was enough, you know. Sometimes that's enough, Todd. Hopefully, that's something you're not going to have to worry about. Too many snow days and uh, adding time onto your calendar. Oh, they but had snow little... time in Texas, though. They, yeah, well, they do, but hopefully, they don't have, have ten. Well, yeah, more. you guys have a bunch of days scheduled in, but we don't. We don't account for hardly any, and so um, we actually had two ice days. One was a joke. Um, That was when the ice apocalypse did not happen. Uh, And then the other one was was pretty bad ice. But yeah, we have to make both of them up. (laughs) Wow. Because you live you live like right down the road from Amber Teeman, right? Uh, in Texas terms, yeah, it's right down the road. Uh, (laughs) Like four hours away. Four hours south of her. How many hours? Four. There you go. Yeah, that's. I thought you guys were like neighbors. That's like, right. Texas neighbor. is like 20 hours to drive across, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. in, in Texas, that's why people when people up north say, oh, and I'm like, yeah, I drive to Dallas all the time. And they say, oh, how many? And I was like, it's four hours. And they're like, what? And I'm like, that's easy in Texas. That's a day trip. That's like across <laughs> the state. Yes, here. they live about as close as we do. <laughs> now, in New Jersey, if you start driving four hours, eventually you're going to get out of the state. So <laughs> it's not that big. But, yeah, we have a, a few people, you know, like if I drove four hours, I, I'd be two hours past where Eric Scheninger is. So that's to, just to give you an idea. We're, but we're right down the road from each other, or the turnpike. So anyway – that's a New Jersey joke. I'm hopefully some of the people are watching. Yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> you know, um, we were going to have grandparents. We're going to be having a grandparents uh, day coming up soon. We're going to honor aunts and uncles and the people yes. who pump our gas. That's right. <laughs> they always, you know, Todd, this is, um, I- I'm glad that you're here tonight, my friend. So tell us, what were you up to this week? What, anything uh, interesting going on in your life? Well, um, I mean, we had two podcast episodes this week of Edu All Stars, which was kind of a lot because we normally only do one a week, um, but we wanted to throw in two. And then I'm still currently teaching fifth grade math on top of being a new principal. Um, I, 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 I have been hired, but I have not officially 
I don't, I don't I don't know how to describe, but I have to hire an entire campus. So I had interviews Tuesday night, I had interviews Thursday night, and I had interviews all day Saturday. So, so you've already started. Well, sort of, um, just with the hiring and starting some of the planning for next year. So I'm, I'm, I, I can't have two contracts at the same time. So I'm still under contract with my current district where I'm teaching, and then after work most days I go over to my new district um, as contracted labor. Um, and work over there. So did, what kind of labor do they have you doing? <laughs> just, right now it's just interviewing and getting all that set up and trying to organize where the heck we're going with everything um, and getting a whole new staff in place. So wow. that's, that's When you say focus. contracted labor, do you mean they're actually paying you for this or you're just doing it because you know you need to do it to be successful next year? No, I'm getting paid for the hours that I put in. Oh, that's good. Wow, jealous. So. <laughs> but not as a contract position. You're kind of a like a contract door. Yeah. So I, like I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't have an office. I don't have anything. I go and sit at a little table in somebody else's office uh, <laughs> because the current principal is still on campus. So I just work out of the administrative oh. office, administrative building. Oh my goodness. You know, before I started here, I paid to fly across the country to come and spend time here and do stuff like that. Oh, <laughs> it was wow. on my dime. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, my new district's only about 20 miles away from my current district, so it's not that far of a difference. Well, I think that leads us right into um, why we wanted to have you here on the on the show. So are you okay if I just – normally Spike takes over. Do it, Jess. Go ahead, Jess. Is that okay? So, That's okay. Um, I was waiting. I'm waiting. You're waiting for me to be bossy. That's so right. You've got your new job. Well, you kind of jumped into that. Tell us about your journey to become an administrator, and then we'll go back to your, your new job. Sure. Well, I got my master's in principal certification. Um, I got my master's about four years ago um, and then got certified about three and a half. Um, and I got it because I, I, was, I was offered – I was offered to get a master's as soon as I got started with my job, and I knew that if I didn't jump into a master's program right away, I may not ever jump into it. Um, so I had the time, I had the money, and so I just went ahead and got my master's, did not plan on using it anytime soon. It was kind of a just, I just want to say I have my master's. <laughs> so um, I hadn't planned on using it. Um, this year, I've been getting to travel a lot and make a lot of connections and um, have been recognized for some things with my blog and Twitter and uh, was not looking to leave the classroom. I absolutely love being in the classroom and never thought it was a place that I would leave. And then my new district, Navasota ISD, um, came to me, one of their upper administrators came to me in January and was just kind of like, what do you think about project-based learning? And I said, well, obviously I love it. That's what I do in my classroom. And he was like, well, what do you think working at a school where everybody's doing project-based learning? And I said, well, I think that would be really cool. And he's like, well, what do you think about leading the school that's going that way? And I said, um, it sounds interesting. And so he, he was like, well, you know, we, we have a principal opening. We are very interested in you. Would love for you to come and apply. And I said, I'm not interested. I love where I'm at. I love being in the classroom. And then at TCEA, our Texas State Technology Conference, um, he was there and he said, let me take you out to lunch and let me just sit with you in a non-scary um, environment and you can just ask whatever you want. And so he, we went to lunch and he and I, I was very blunt with my questions. I said, you know, I don't want to be out of the classroom. If I'm going to be an administrator, I want a guarantee that you're not going to have me sitting in my office at meetings or and all the time. I said, I want to be active with my teachers. I want to help them. I want to do all these kind of things. And, and I said, you know, I, I, I like to think of myself as an out-of-the-box kind of thinker. And I said, I don't want to be in a district that's not going to encourage that. Um, I have ideas and, and I don't want to be fighting these things all the time. And, and he kind of was, they, he laid out the vision of the district and it aligned very closely to my beliefs about education. And so, um, then he threw out the, the comment of, well, you know, you'd get to hire your entire staff and we're going fully project based learning and we're working with an organization that's going to help train all the staff and, and we want you to travel and speak as well. And we want you to be in the classroom. And, when, and 
it turned into being a dream job offer. Um, and I went and talked with my wife, and we did a lot of praying about it and trying to figure out if that was where I really wanted to be, if I was really ready to leave the classroom. And I sought out advice from some people I really admire that are administrators. I talked to Jimmy Casas, I talked to Eric Schinniger, I talked to Brad Gustafson, Tony Sininus, and I was just one reaching out to them to see their feelings on what it was like when they took their job. And just kind of felt like I was being led to be there. And so I went and interviewed. Um, longest interview of my life. Um, I didn't realize how long it was, but an hour and 45 minutes later, I was leaving the interview um, and then got offered the job that weekend. Um, and everything just fell into place. And we that was in early March, I think, when I went to the school board and got voted in. Um, and we've just been off and running ever since. Um, trying to get every all the all our ducks in a row and everything lined up. Wow. Hey Todd, um, that's an amazing story. What I was I was wondering if you could go back with us a little bit before that time for some of our listeners who, you know, might not know your story. Like, how did you get into you know becoming a connected educator? You know, like where does you know where where did you get started and and how did you start implementing it in your class? Well. Um, my former assistant superintendent for my district in Waller, um, he left his position and on his way out came to me and said, I think you're doing great things in the classroom, um, but you don't ever share anything that you do. And I said, yes, I do. I tell everybody on my and my team. I share it with the staff. We do great things as a school. And he said, but you could be reaching more teachers and helping inspire more, and you're missing an opportunity to share the great things that you're doing. And he said, I want to teach you Twitter. And I said, I'm not interested. I don't care. I don't want to use that. I have a Twitter account, and I just use it to follow like four celebrities. I don't <laughs> care when you went to the bathroom and what you had for lunch. <laughs> and he said, no, let me teach you how to use it for educational purposes. And he taught me about uh, Twitter chats and who to follow and connecting with others. And just like most people who got who get started on social media, I was very shy. I was a stalker before I was an interactor. And so I followed some people, started getting great ideas, and was got brave enough to join a chat and tweet out something. And then somebody retweeted it, and somebody favorited it. And I thought, wow, my voice matters. These people care what I have to say. And I began to just share more. Um, and then I started blogging, and, and I love writing, but I've never shared any of my writing with anyone. And so blogging was very scary for me at first. And I, my when I first started blogging, it was a private blog. I blogged for nobody unless they subscribed and I approved them kind of thing because I was scared to share my ideas. And uh, I opened it up and just I, I decided very purposefully that I if I was going to do this, I was going to do it no holes barred. I was going to be honest. I was going to share my mistakes as well as my successes because I know that that's the kind of learner I am and those are the kind of people that I appreciate learning from. Um, ones that don't just talk about their celebrations but ones that discuss things that aren't working either. Um, and so I started blogging about just the things we were doing in my classroom. Um, we started flipping and doing project-based learning that year. That was two years, not this school year, but last school year. Um, and it started to get some recognition for some people started to notice some of the things that uh, we were doing and started sharing it outside and then in February the National School Board Association um, selected me as one of their 20 to watch and that was a crazy surreal moment um, to be able to just the recognition um, and I always say the recognition that I get is crazy to me because I don't think it's a reflection of me at all. I think it's a reflection of my students um, and a reflection of that I believe that I surround myself with the best people in the world and I steal ideas. And so every time I get recognized for something, it's always weird because I'm like, well, that was uh, that idea came from this person's idea and my kids did great work with it and they're the ones that are making me look good, but I get this recognition. And so, um, but I, I continued to blog and share stuff. And then as the year progressed, um, some other entities noticed some things that I was doing. And then I didn't mention this a minute ago, but that's how Navasota ISD found me. 
they had been following my Twitter, they had been reading my blog, and they said that was the reason they sought me out because the kind of ideals that I had and the things that I was accomplishing, they wanted that accomplished on a school-wide level in their district. And so now I tell people when I talk about social media and the power that exists in it, I always say, you know, the new job that I have exists only because of my work on social media and choosing to be honest and share my successes as well as my failures. That's a very, very powerful thing. And quite a journey because now you've got your own great Edu All Stars podcast and your Tech Ninja Todd. And have well, that, I'll tell you, that Edu All Stars podcast is one of the things that I'm so proud to be a part of, to get to speak with people and just hear their stories about what they're doing. Uh, I, we always say we need to start doing our podcast in the morning because it gets us so jazzed up that we can't sleep at night after we do it. <laughs> so even like I just the, 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 on this yeah, you know, with John oh, Fritzky, yeah. anyone else that has that problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we interviewed John Fritzky on Wednesday, and it was so good. And we were talking afterwards, and Chris goes, "God, we need to start doing this in the morning. I just want to go back to school and work and have the kids show up now." And so, um, but that has been just an incredible experience to make those kind of connections with people. Wow. You know, it's interesting, Todd, the other day we were having a, um, like one of our Tech Fridays that we do, and I have a fifth grade teacher who, you know, reminds me a lot of you, and uh, it, it's it's funny, like he was, he was doing a, um, just a demonstration on uh, flip classrooms, flip learning for the staff, and he said, um, "Yeah, I have this this blog that's going to answer all those questions that I know you're all going to have. Like, I can't do this, I can't do that." And I just, I actually raised my hand. I was like, "Ryan, who? Just out of curiosity, who wrote that?" And he said, um, "This guy Todd Nessaloni." And I said, "Oh, Tech Ninja Todd." I'm like, "He's like, yeah, he has the answers for everything, you know, <laughs> for this. It, it, it was amazing." So. Um, that's cool. You know, and then even just looking at your site, like he's gone on your site and now like he loves, you know, uh, you know, the things that you're doing like with Sophia and, um, you know, some of the other, you know, apps and, and getting into augmented reality and stuff. And I just want to let you know, so, so your, 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 your journey and all the things that you just talked about has, you know, has definitely branched out and, and is impacting kids and, and teachers uh, when you probably wouldn't even have known it. Well, I, I mean, thank you for sharing that with me. I, somebody mentioned that the other day, and I said, it's so weird to me to to think that anybody listens to anything that I say. Or, I mean, yes, I, people follow me on Twitter, but I always feel like none of them are real people sometimes. And so it's like, it's like, <laughs> what, you actually heard what I tweeted? You actually read what I wrote in my blog, and you did it at your school? What? I'm just some fifth grade teacher. And so it's... It's always weird, but really cool to hear that something I did mattered to somebody. Hmm. All right. So I want to go back to this exciting new job that you've got, Todd. So is, are you, did you say like you're starting a new school or it's a charter school or, I mean, it sounds like you're starting this, right? Well, um, this school that I'm taking over has been reconstituted. Um, they've been several years underperforming um, according to the state of Texas uh, standardized test. Uh, we're not Common Core in Texas, and so we do a, a STAR test um, is what ours is called, um, and they've been several years underperforming. Um, and so one of the state's plans, in addition to working with the district, was to reconstitute that campus. And what that meant was to bring in a whole new team. And so all of the staff that is currently there um, resigned in February. Um, they have the option to reapply, and several of them have, and we've already hired back a couple of them. Um, but um, I have to go in and bring a new vision and rebuild from the ground up um, because there were a lot of a lot of issues with the way things were being done and so the they're bringing in all new blood and so now I have to try to bring this school out of the hole that they found themselves in. Wow that is quite um, quite a task for a brand new principal. 
<laughs> yeah, in addition to they're going completely project-based this year as a campus. Um, that was part of the reconstitution plan and all the fourth and fifth grade classes because it's a fourth and fifth grade campus. Um, all the fourth and fifth grade classes will be going uh, self-contained for the first time. Oh, you mean like they're not going to be departmentalized like for math or language right. arts? Right. Right. And, and I know you... from what I've heard up north that, that most of y'all are self-contained anyway, yeah. um, usually up until fourth and fifth, but it's usually by third grade in Texas, most schools have it departmentalized. Um, but the, the district and I are in agreement, but the district made the decision before I came on, but we're in agreement that um, the thing, one of the things, the biggest things they think is missing, missing is relationships. And so the, their strong belief in going self-contained is that that will allow those teachers to form better relationships with the students. Yeah, that is huge. Actually, this the school I'm at when I came here, um, second through fifth grade was departmentalized, and um, I was the main administrator that changed that. And you know, I think teachers were unhappy with it to begin with because you know it was easy to just teach science, it was easy to just teach math, and to just focus on that one content area. But after they made the change, and you know, they they truly knew their students in their classrooms. They knew, you know, based on what reading level they were at, they knew how that affected them in math and in science and in social studies. And I don't think they would go back to departmentalize now after having made the change. Right. Wow, so you've you've got quite a task, but if anybody could do that, it would be you, Todd. I sure hope so. <laughs> I know a lot of eyes are on me, and a lot of people are watching, so I'm I'm ready to. We we've well, I have my entire administrative team hired officially now, so I've got an assistant principal, a counselor, and an instructional coach, um, and we've hired uh, three teachers so far, I think, or four. So. Wow how how large is your campus? How many? What's there the are 325 of? students. Okay. Wow. And you have an assistant principal too. Yes. So I, yeah, many people have made that comment, and I am very oh. thankful um, yeah. having that. And coming into this position with zero um, experience, um, I was I'm I'm very fortunate that I'm actually bringing my current assistant principal with me oh. to be my assistant oh. principal at my new campus. So. Oh my gosh, that that is pretty cool. That's very cool. Um, we have a question in the chat from Brian Alabeck for Todd. And Todd, the question is, how would you describe your leadership style? You know, one of the biggest strengths that I think I'm going to have coming into this position with um, and just now leaving the classroom mm -hmm. is still having a really firm grasp on what it's like to be a teacher in the midst of all the muck. And so I'm coming in knowing exactly what is going on in the ranks and so I think that's really going to help me um, I in my interviews several people have asked you know well, how's this gonna look well what's that gonna be like well how's this gonna be in the school and I've had to tell them you know I don't I'm not a dictator and I don't and I don't view it as my school and so some of the decisions that they're asking about I haven't made those because I don't want to make those by myself I want to make that with my administrative team, or I want to bring the teachers that I'm going to hire in when those conversations. And so um, I view myself very much as a team player. I want to. I want. I don't want my. I read this in Eric Schinniger's book, Digital Liter, uh, Digital Digital Leadership, mm -hmm. and you know I don't want my student. I think it was his, or it may have been another book that I read called uh, Wooden, um, which is based at which is the book by. Um, the some a basketball coach, Mr. Wooden. John his, Wooden. Yeah, he yeah. was a longtime coach at the for the Los Angeles Lakers. My friend Drew Manock bought me that book, and that was one no, of the no. most. I think it was no, UCLA. Was the, UCLA. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, that was one of the best books that I've read. And he said, you know, I I don't want my staff to have buy-in. I don't want them to buy into it. I want them to be part of the process. And I want them to have a, a stake in everything that we do. I don't want to convince them that it's a good idea. I want them to believe it from the start. Mm -hmm. I operate the same way, Todd. I, I don't. You're never going to get 100% buy-in, and um, it can't just come from the top down. They need to see the value in it themselves and and let that spread like wildfire for them to all see the benefit. Um, one of the other questions, sorry, Spike. No, go uh, ahead. One of the other questions in the in the chat room is 
how are you planning to build these relationships and the trust in a new school with a new staff where they haven't worked with each other and you haven't worked likely with any most or any of them right. how do you what I mean what is you know what are your thoughts on that well um, like I said the campus is moving to a project-based learning model and we are working with an organization that's going to help train us um, and work with us throughout the school year and one of the things that that organization does is they do a four-day camp um, in June and I'm bringing half of my staff to that camp and so that's one thing that I'm really looking forward to is that time to learn and bond um, with the staff um, at that camp um, and then uh, throughout that I mean I love the things that I hear other great administrators doing. I love that, that Jimmy uh, always feeds his staff and, and takes his staff to eat and things like that. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm looking, I'm going to look into ways that we can bond on a personal level um, and grow together personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know th this wouldn't work for you, but for most principals in a new position who are coming into a school with an already existing staff, um, I learned this from reading a book by Pete Hall. I think it's called The New Principal or something like that, very simple title. I just came and I spent an entire day with the staff here, um, and I, you know, the secretary had made a schedule for me to meet with individuals and, and teams and just simply ask them what are what are two things that you know you're proud of in this school that that should be maintained and what are two things that you see need to be changed and just started conversations from there to learn about the school um, you know to learn what are the strengths of the school and what are things that they're proud of and then also you know could use that to start seeing what things did need change that most of them all agreed on so when I came in and started making some changes they were things that they had already identified and it wasn't just you know the new principal coming in and changing everything um, so I know that that probably won't help you because you're starting from the bottom up, but for any of other aspired administrators that are listening, um, that's one thing that really benefited me coming in. Yeah, I, I agree. I did something very similar. Um, I, got, I came in in April, actually, and just I, I spent you know weeks just interviewing every single person and I actually gave them a, another book that I, I think is, is a really a really good help is um, it's called The Question. It's by Dan Sullivan, and uh, basically it says like if we're having this conversation three years from now, what will have to have have to change, uh, both personally and professionally, for you to achieve your goals? You know, so basically it takes you out of the present. It takes you out of that you know mindset of you know identifying you know things that may be personal or or professional. That but if you put it into the future, it's actually a little bit easier. You know, so you can just you know say okay so what's it gonna what's it gonna look like you know and the other thing that I would recommend um, if you haven't read it or for other aspiring administrators is the first 90 days now I don't know who wrote that but um, the, the basic premise of that is you know the, the principal I mean I'm sorry the president gets a hundred days you know to prove themselves and as a new leader you get 90 um, and basically what it what it says is that you know what got you there and this is interesting what got you there is not going it's not going to be what makes you continue and makes you effective as a new per a, a new leader uh, because you're going to have to come up with a whole new uh, mindset you know as the leader so I think I think it's fascinating but um, I'm sure that people are giving you all types of suggestions yes and I and I am taking and writing down all of yeah. them <laughs> um, you know for me too um, in I had come from quite a bit of training um, uh, you know of being in classrooms and giving them feedback and, and having people change and I was actually an assistant principal at a school that had been underperforming for five years Todd and it was their last year to prove to the state before they'd be taken over and so I was still in that mindset of you know I'm gonna get in classrooms and they're gonna do this and they're gonna do that and I realized like in the first month that I was a steamroller and they had never had people in their classrooms at all um, so I learned real fast that that was not going to be effective um, and I just you know started focusing on okay how do they teach and just leaving you know little positive notes to you know get to I you know know what what are their teaching styles what are their strengths and you know even if it was just building on little things like oh that's a great bulletin board or um, you know oh I see a picture of your daughter on your desk how old is she and you know just really having to have that you know 
small chat and build a relationship before you can come in and focus on the instruction. Because if, if they don't, just like with the kids, if they don't know you care, then they're not going to care about what you know. Right. Or however that phrase goes. Um, there was another chat or another question in the chat. Um, Todd, will you and your teachers be creating class lists before the end of this school year? Can you talk about what that process would be? And I suppose, especially since you don't have all your teachers hired yet, how will that work? Yeah, you know, we, we talked about that, my new AP and I, uh, earlier this week, actually. And one of the things we're asking the current staff to do is, is uh, we're going to start a Google spreadsheet and have them go in and just kind of identify students that probably wouldn't be in the be best interest to have in the same class together um, and just make notes about students that we can then take and use um, based on what the current staff recommends um, since we are coming in not knowing the students at all and, and not knowing what current staff will remain um, next year um, so we're, we're trying to do that it's it's, it's such a different predicament than so many other people who jump into a, a principal position. And so we're having to sometimes learn as we go because I don't want to step on any toes. I don't want to upset anybody. I don't want to I, – I have to be very careful with the way that I do things, especially with this being a small community. Um, I have to be very careful with all of that. And so we are looking to the current staff to help us along the way, um, but we are trying to figure out what the best route is for that. Well, and, you know, since the whole school is changing, too, then my next big question for you is what are you doing in terms of communication with parents? Because it's new for everybody. Right. Uh, well, you know, one of the things is I, I've already reached out to the PTO, and they have a PTO meeting next week, and I'm coming to that, and they're advertising that to all the parents that they can come and meet me there. I know that there's some plans in the work to have a, a school movie night, and have me be at the movie night um, where parents can kind of meet me. Um, and we're, we've tried to do like a slow rollout of here's where you can meet me in a non-threatening place. I'm not going to stand up and give a speech, but you can come and, and see who I am and hear from me. And, and we're trying to do little things like that. I know that over the summer I'm going to be sending stuff out to parents about who I am, what the vision is, what they have to look forward to. And I'd like to provide an opportunity or two just to invite parents out to come meet the new school, even before open house or things like that. Um, you know, the chat keeps scrolling really fast, so this is random off of what you were just <laughs> talking about. I'm sorry, that's how we function here. Uh, that will be your principal <laughs> night. Random, everything <laughs> random, nothing connected, yeah. every time. You just do it as it comes, just so you know. <laughs> um, but, but anyways, Brian in the chat said, um, writing, handwritten thank you notes, encouragement cards, birthday cards, etc., get, get well cards, go a long way to establish a positive and personalized professional relationship with your staff. Um, and that also made me think of the book, um, feed the teachers so they don't eat the students, which <laughs> sounds like a really crazy title of a book, but it was a really good book just for different ideas like that of things to do to recognize your staff um, so they are happy and don't eat the students. I love that. Todd, when you're going through your interview process, you talked a little bit about you know the mission and vision of the of the school and and um, but I, I guess there's there's got to be that uncomfortable thing of you know if it wasn't and that happens up in New Jer New Jersey too like you know if it's an un underperforming school and then you know they they um, basically get rid of everybody and the the principals and stuff so when you're looking to hire these folks back uh, or if you are um, you know, do they have to have experience in PBL, and you know, how does that work? You know, it, it's hard to find teachers with experience in PBL. Um, it's it's such a newer, big concept. I think that it's hard to find teachers even that know what it is. Um, and in the interviews that we've done, only one person out of the twenty or I haven't probably done twenty, probably sixteen interviews um, has actually been experienced with project-based learning. And wow. so I let them know right away that, you know, we're going to be working with this organization called Engage to Learn, and they're going to be helping train us, and they're going to be helping get all the teachers on board in addition to working throughout the year. It's a two-year process. And so half the staff goes to training for four days this summer, and then Engage to Learn works between 8 to 36 days with our staff throughout the school year of coming to the campus and helping, and then the other half of the staff will go next summer to the four-day training. 
And so I let them know that it's not something they're going to be thrown to the wolves on. Um, I don't think it's necessary to know what project-based learning is, but I do define it, and I do very clearly say, this is where we're moving. If this is not what you want, do not take this position because this is what we are looking to do. And if you're not going to do it, you're not going to stay here. And so I don't want you getting involved with something that you're not completely aware of. And so I've made that very clear to the people that are applying that it's not going to be easy. Um, this is a, a total mind shift um, coming from somebody, most teachers who lecture um, into an environment where it's going to be primarily student-led. And that, that's got to be tough, too, because, you know, they're also going to be looking for jobs. They need employment, right. you know, so I, I, it's, I'm surprised that only one person would even have mentioned it because, like, I don't know. I'm just thinking off the top of my head here that, you know, that if I got a notice that I wouldn't be hired back, like, you know, I'd be hired back or I have to apply and this new, you know, school is going to be taking over and it's going to have a PBL focus. I think I would do some research on that. Well, you know, and, and I, I have the same thoughts behind it. Um, and, you know, some people come in and they go, oh, yeah, I heard that that's where the school is moving. So I kind of looked it up and I kind of have an idea. And I'm like, that's all you did? I can go and find 20 resources just by Googling project-based learning right. um, and things that you can do and, and have a clear idea of it. And so I think some of that goes back to the culture of what exists and, and looking at that and, and the changes that have to come and and be in place and I mean I have to remember too that I'm in an area of the state that has a lot of teachers that aren't connected that don't attend conferences that don't go to these things and so they don't some of them don't know how to seek out knowledge like a connected educator would um, I have to think about my life and how if I didn't know this, I would reach out to this person, I would go and Google this, I would check out this website, I would go to this virtual conference or go to this, con go to this ed camp and attend a conversation about that. Um, but many of these teachers don't know what an ed camp is. They, they would never be on Twitter. Um, they, they don't go to conferences because the school district won't send them and if they won't send them, they're not going. And so it's, it's stepping into a mindset like that and going, Here's where, here's where I have to introduce the ideas that can change your career and, and really set you on a different path. Well, I hope you can get up to um, SLA, you know, and, you know, that school with um, Chris Lehman, and it's right in Philadelphia, and he has the, the conference every year, um, which the name is escaping me right now. Somebody help me. Um, oh, his – the conference that he has every year. Now, anyway, so they do inquiry-based. The entire it's it's not a it's not a charter school. It's a magnet school, and it's it's in Philadelphia, and um, you know, it, and it's it's amazing because basically what they're trying to do is you know they're trying to solve problems through using, you know, a, you know a very focused approach, but also putting so much more emphasis on the learning process and so much more emphasis on, you know, on the kids and teachers, you know, as um, you know, as facilitators, and I've gotten a chance because we're not that far um, to to go and visit. And he just, you know, the 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 school just runs. You know, granted, it's a high school, but um, I could see you really learning a lot from from him. Yeah, Educon, that's it. Jeez, th Teresa, thank you to I, Kurt Reese. Oh, Kurt, Kurt Reese. Reese you know, there. and I've been, I've actually presented at Educon, but. And it's the, the craziest thing because that's the second time that's happening tonight where Teresa had to save me because the, the first time was – I couldn't even remember the guy that wrote the book, um, and Teresa found that. It's and all good. It's all good. We all have our roles. Michael <laughs> Watkins wrote so the first 90 days. There's a great um, new discussion going on in the chat room from another um, yeah. person who just got a new principal job, and it says, my new admin job is in a small town – I can relate – and I have a – had a few future staff members mention that we need to all grab a drink sometime, appropriate or not. I've heard many different perspectives, thoughts, um, and there's some great ideas going on in the chat, like, yes, adults have drinks, just have one. Kurt says, have one, and then buy a round as you're leaving. <laughs> um, I, I think um, 
I can see where it would be hard to decide whether you should or not, but I think it's important just to be able to have the chance to get to know people, um, you know, at, at kind of a social level. Not like you're going out to be friends with them and, and party, but just get to have dinner and, and get to have some conversations about who they are, which is a great way to start building trust and get to know them. Other we did. I think the first thing, um, my school is also in a small um, in a small area, and it's because it's a private school. It's not in a, um, you know, it's not in a. Uh, sorry, I'm getting some weird like radio feedback on my earphones. Um, you know, we don't have we don't have a, a school district, so we're all kind of on our own. And we had a barbecue. That was the first thing that we did. They had like the staff barbecue, and then I joined um, to meet the staff, and that was before really we had anything. There was discussion about going out to eat, but I think they were more comfortable being together and being in their atmosphere, if that makes sense. So for them, that was what we did. But I don't know, for going out for a drink, I th and I think it, to be totally honest, it's horrible to say, but I think it depends on, on your staff, on if you're, you know, my, my staff, I'm a female principal, and I have all female staff with the exception of one male. If you're a male principal and you've got all female staff, I don't know, maybe that's different. Does anybody have a thought on that? I, I'm in that situation. I, I mean, there's there's a couple males that we have, but it's predominantly a female, um, you know, staff. And, you know, I've gone out, you know, with folks that, um, like, we've either done, like, a happy hour or, right. you know, like the, like, the the end of the year party and stuff like that. Um, I don't think it's that much of a big deal. I think it's all on how you handle yourself and, and right. how that goes on. I, I'm, I'm like certainly not one that makes like things taboo, but there are people who've advised me at all time. Like, no, you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do that. And I'm just not, I'm just, that's just not how I live my life anyway. So I would, I would want to make it just, you know, that's part of it. Just like if people invited me to go out like for coffee or tea or something like that, you know, but I, Granted, I know that, that alcohol has a, a different context to it. Well, and I think whenever there's going to be a staff outing, there's going to be people who do not go for whatever reason, schedules or, or just don't want to. Um, and then I think um, I've experienced where it's been like, well, she's friends with them. No, I went with whoever was going. And even if I you know, do some of those social things, it doesn't mean I'm not going to hold those people accountable if need be. So um, it just adds some interesting dynamics. But I think no matter what, you're always going to have staff who say, oh, you favor that staff or you're friends with that one. And, um, and they actually have absolutely no idea that maybe I don't favor them at all. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, there's, it, I think, you know, Todd, being a new administrator and going into your new, posi your new position, I think we look at things more cautiously than like Justin Spikewood or Kurt or, or Peggy in the chat room, people who have already done this job for enough time. You know, we're so, we're so concerned about the little, you know, that what could go wrong. They've right. already done this. They know, you know, so that's what I really like about, you know, especially about the chat room and about, about the two of them because they are, they've got this down. <laughs> they know. You know. They've got I all saw, the answers. <laughs> I saw in the chat room that Peggy wrote that retreats away from school for the entire staff are a great way to get to know each other. And I know that there was one year that the, uh, of when I was a teacher that my principal took all of us out to a local, um, campground type thing and there was an obstacle course and and that was a great what time to bond and we went into this big hall and we had a staff meeting and we watched this inspirational teacher movie and discussed it and and that was just a really neat way to have everybody get to know each other and it was kind of those things where it's off campus it's not around all these other parents in a public place and so if you want to bring a few drinks you can bring them yourself and have them out there um, but I know in the district that I currently work in, it's kind of a, if you're going to have drinks, you don't have them within the city limits. You go to another local city away from the where you're at and you have drinks there. You do not have drinks within the city that you work. And so I don't know how my new district will be, but I'm assuming it's probably one of the similar things since it's such a small community. Okay. Well, great discussion. Um, before we move on to word association, do you have any questions for us, Todd? We've been sitting here grilling you. Well, you know, I one of the questions that I had was, what's the biggest thing you learned that nobody warned you about? Oh, my gosh. 
gosh, just one. You know, <laughs> that you didn't learn anything in any that, of your classes. <laughs> no, matter, no matter what people tell you, Todd, and, you know, everybody says you have to be prepared. Anything can happen. No matter what you think could possibly happen, something worse will happen. <laughs> it can be so much worse. <laughs> Or so much different. I mean, you you literally have to be prepared for the absolute unexpected. I mean, it's in anything for for the you know the 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 atmosphere, the people. You have to be prepared for anything and be able to go with the flow. They, I mean, people will tell you that, but it's really, really true. I I think for me it was being under a microscope and I, I don't think I really understood that and and I think like they were all joking like yeah, you're not going to learn that in grad school and you know honestly a lot of the the folks that I had in, in grad school they were awesome professors great researchers and stuff but they weren't necessarily school leaders so um, you know and, and I would get you know some of that information from you know previous principals that I've worked for but I too had them under a microscope I didn't even realize it but you know I mean it's everything I mean from you know the car that you drive where you park who you talk to who you don't talk to you know where you spend your time what you do the conversations that you have I mean it, it really is uh, quite a um, a responsibility you know and I think and, and after you've done it for a little while I'm just only finishing up my third year but I think if I would have known, you know, what complete microscope that I was under all the time, I don't know if it would necessarily change who or what I am or what I did because once I found social media, I kind of was just put everything out there anyway. Um, but it really, it really can be difficult sometimes where, you know, you just, you have all this, this, uh, everybody's just watching and theorizing on all the things that you do. And I would just add, you're never going to make everybody happy. Um, so don't ever even try. And um, communication is so important. And even if you think that you've communicated with everybody, there's going to be one person who will be upset because yeah. you didn't communicate with them first or you didn't say it in a different way or you didn't communicate with somebody who you didn't think had anything to do with it, but they thought they did somehow. They they did, right? <laughs> it's yeah. It's it's not in what you say in your communications. It's what you don't. It's in what you don't say in your communications. It has to be so ridiculously clear and so out of control. I mean, just it as black and white as you can possibly make it. Don't muddy it up. Just right. do it. <laughs> and you know what? You know what's one thing I learned this year. It, it, it's it's interesting, and I've actually used the quote a, a few times. It's um, is it. A matter of like your voice not being heard that this is with staff or you just not getting your way you know and I think oh, that's that was yeah. that's really powerful because you know it can happen with parents it can happen with students and 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 by golly it happens with staff because you know you want to be able to you know have and I'm sure Todd because your first name is Todd that you're you're very familiar with Todd Whitaker right <laughs> yes because <laughs> I, I know that all Todd's <laughs> I know all Todds hang out with each other. I know We're you guys have this big, all connected. You have this big conference and everything. So Todd Whitaker says that you make your, you, you treat everybody the same, mm -hmm. and you make your decisions based on your best people. Yeah. I never really understood what he was saying until this year when I was like, oh, is it, you know, and and it was like sort of a revelation. Like, you know, is is it that, that some of these folks don't think that you know they're being listened to because that's not just a thing. It's oh. They don't. They just. Some people aren't happy because they're just not getting their way. Mm -hmm. Did you know that there's a church of Todd? <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm sorry. We probably shouldn't go into that. But I, I thought you would know that because you, you are Todd. <laughs> you are Todd. Right. All right. So, so Todd, <laughs> one of the. So you one of the. Um, yeah. You know, time to move on. It's time to move on. It's getting late. So one of the. <laughs> One of the things that we like to do, I'm sure you've seen, uh, with our guests is word association. And we've gotten some suggestions from the chat room. So I don't know if you play in Texas like they do in Wisconsin. Oh, you yeah, please set the rules, use, Teresa. Yes, you can only <laughs> use one word to reply to the word association. No sounds, no grunts, no sentences. One word, that, and no hyphens. Just one word, one oh, word. Gosh, that's you're so oh, the pressure. I'm just yeah. stressed out that, now. 
I, I completely guy. agree with he's her. He's a Patrick yeah. learning guy. He's got to integrate it all together. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, he's I can't play this with Gus, and she's given us sentences, paragraphs even. All right, so Todd, <laughs> number one, I think we have seven of them. So number one is Ninja. Oh, gosh, I can't. This is... You can uh, use a couple words if you need to. Just try not to. Move, Whatever. Move. You guys yelled at me. It'll get him, it'll get him moving. Back. It'll get him moving, and then we'll bring him okay. back. Stacy Huffine, and that's because she's my co-tech ninja. Perfect. All right, how about leadership? This is funny. I'm, all I'm thinking of is names. Eric Schinniger. Every time I hear leadership, that I think works. Eric Schinniger. Okay, well, hopefully you don't come up with okay. a name on this one. If you do, that's you right. can't share it. <laughs> Worksheet. Worksheet. <laughs> Die. Oh. <laughs> this one is from Kurt. Chris Kessler. Hilarious. <laughs> How about student discipline? Necessary. Humor. A must. Twitter. <laughs> one word for Twitter? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't get 140 characters? Nope. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I got three words. Career and life changing. That's four words. Oh, I need to learn how to count. <laughs> you can use the hyphen and just pretend that it was three. It's all yeah. right. Stress relief. Edu all stars. Oh. Nice. That is fantastic. Well, we do a segment. Uh, our Oh, and family. We missed one. I'm sorry. Somebody, a spike edited it in. Liz, my wife. Aww. All right, very good. We you do... still oh. let him go. Teresa, you let him off on that. I can't believe it. What? Well, I nobody's he... going to know who Liz is. Exactly. Well, I, had to, I had to specify. I mean, come on, Teresa. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm losing. I am losing my. Chris, somebody said it was high stakes word association. It is That's high stakes. stakes. And apparently, apparently, I'm losing my high stakes. Although Kurt Reese says that ninjas don't talk, so I guess we're all losing our. I guess we're all losing our our cards tonight, aren't we? So we do. We do. <laughs> Last thing that we do on this show is our principles to follow. I'm saying it slowly because Jeff told us to tell us how you do I like that little, I love that little graphic, but that little bun on the top. Or maybe we should just start doing our hair with the bun on the top of the head, and then it would be cool. So our principal to follow is, of course, Todd Nasloni, Tech Ninja Todd. He is at Tech Ninja Todd, and his, podca his podcast is the Edu All-Stars. He is at um, Edu All-Stars HQ, and uh, his blog, which we've tweeted out a few times, but I'll retweet it again, is www.tednesslinney.com. Spike? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anybody to follow. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I didn't put, I thought that's all we were doing. <laughs> I know, I was trying like, to mess oh, read. I Spike just was trying read. to mess you up on things, just <sighs> trying to poke. Hey, Hey, Todd, thanks so much for coming out tonight. We really enjoyed um, speaking with you. Um, well, thank our... you. I, I, have, I was honored to even be asked to be on this. I listen to you guys often and have, and have really enjoyed learning from you, and we'll be seeking plenty of your advice over the next couple months and years, so be ready. So are you on Voxer so we can you can connect with us there? I am. John Samuelson, iPad Sammy, got me on Voxer and sends me seven-minute boxes all the time. <laughs> oh, that's a long. We really, like, at three minutes, we're, we're begging for forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Kurt Reese has one-minute box rules, and if you go over a minute, you have to pay the price. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. What if you put it on double or triple speed, you know, then it really does it come out less than a minute? Oh, I have to because John, John will talk like this, and then <laughs> yeah. on triple speed, and it sounds normal. <laughs> I love the Voxer rants. I love the, you know, the, yes. you know, and we use a lot of it for our show prep and just, you know, connecting with each other. So it, it really is, a, it's a really good, um, it's a really good tool. Yeah. So 
our next chat will be on May 4th, which is next Sunday. Um, and we want to thank our sponsor, storyboardthat.com. Remember, to our loyal TeacherCast followers, uh, they can enjoy 25% off any packages uh, purchased today at storyboardthat.com slash TeacherCast. And make sure to uh, follow our friends here, uh, Teresa Stagger, who is at Principal Stagger on Twitter, Jessica Johnson, who is at Principal J, and of course, our awesome guest, Todd Nesloni at Tech Ninja Todd. Make sure to follow all of them and our awesome uh, teacher cast, Jeff Bradbury. Follow him at TeacherCast on Twitter, TeacherCast.net for his blogs and resources, and TeacherCast.tv. Please don't forget to follow at Dr. Spike Cook because I don't think he, <laughs> he said himself. Oh, I did not say no. myself. <laughs> Oops. But please follow Spike, and if you're enjoying the podcast, please, please, please um, don't forget that you can subscribe through iTunes, the audio, or the video. I would suggest the audio, um, you know, just because we're in hoodies every week, so it's really not that fun to watch. Um, but also, um, be sure to leave a comment, be sure to leave a rating so that um, so that the podcast keeps showing up on the, on the um, help me. The podcast. Uh, main page. On the podcast main page. page. Thank you. <laughs> Please be sure it's late. <laughs> Please be sure to uh, to rate the podcast and to follow everyone. And you can uh, you can catch us again at teachercast.tv next week. And Jess, I think it's up to you. Principal cast out.